Hello and welcome to Wake Up and Smell the Mic S&P 500 review for Friday, January 27th, 2023. It's now the 26th at 7.09 p.m. Central Time. We start off in the S&P 500 daily chart in Mark looking back to the end of December 2021. I'll zoom into the current area now. The S&P 500 daily chart has printed the combo and sequential cell setup fork count. And to negate that for end of day on the 27th, there must be a close below 4019.81 for the price flip to the buy setup count 1. And the relative retracement up 1 was qualified on this bar for the 26th. And to get the confirmation bar end of day on the 27th, there must be an open higher than this close, tick higher than this high on the 26th, and close higher than this close on the 26th. So everything's happening on this bar on the 26th. All that happens and this becomes qualified and confirmed and in the process of doing that it's pretty close to the 50 percent qualified and confirmed propulsion exhaustion up tag that there should be more follow through to the upside and then we print the d wave up wave five on a high higher than this high on the 13th and at that point it's up against major resistance with the combo and sequential by TDST line there. And if that gets broken to the upside and qualified and confirmed somehow either from upside of it or downside of it, gets qualified and confirmed, the sky's the limit for upside. For sure, up to the 100% qualified and confirmed propulsion exhaustion up at that level. So tag that. And then we have another ongoing supply line and a disqualified cell risk level. And get this qualified and confirmed to the upside. Then for sure, it sky's the limit to the upside at least up to the relative retracement is qualified up to at that level get that qualified and confirmed to the upside and it's getting pretty close to the up wave projection for wave 5 that will print if we get past that high here so that's the marks projection for that I have my own we'll see that in the big board chart and something drastic happens and we head south the only level that could become qualifying here is the momentum down well actually it could qualify the trend factor down one at 39.25.41 but the down Two trend factor is right there with the disqualified momentum down so close below those two levels will qualify all three of these levels and another sign of continued upside is confirming this qualified supply line here that it qualified on this bar on the 26th so an open higher than this close on the 27th and then tick higher and close above this close for end of day on the 27th and this becomes qualified and confirmed for the breakout of the trend line to the upside and there might be a little bit of trouble qualifying this ongoing supply line which for the 26th was at 4062.56 so it will be a few points less than that for the start of the day on the 27th so it would have to open above that level to have any chance of getting it qualified 
the NASDAQ 100 equal weighted index NDXT has broken out of a diamond bottoming pattern and this is drawn just about as good as it can get it has a few hits here so if this is the anchor then we have one two three hits from inside the diamond pattern testing the left upper quadrant and two hits from the inside of the upper right quadrant here so anchored here and two hits here and on the bo bottom right quadrant there's a few hits to the downside if this is the anchor then we have one two three and then on the lower left quadrant from the inside there's a couple of hits over here so that's enough to justify the diamond bottoming pattern so the measure rule from the highest peak to the lowest valley is 25.1 percent or so and we move that to the breakout area and that brings that well above the downtrend line that's above where price is now and the point before where it plunged into the diamond pattern we drew a horizontal line going across there so it could get up as high as that so that's all in the same area this downtrend line and the horizontal line so I would take this 25.1% measure rule with a grain of salt and we'll focus in on this area if it makes it up there. And if it makes it up that way and gets near it, the thing about these diamond bottoming patterns is that it turns around and plunges back down towards it very quickly. So we're definitely playing musical chairs here and NDXT price didn't make it above its 200 simple moving average and is bumping up against its 200 EMA in dotted green here you can see it in the thumbnail so a breakout above that and it could climb up towards this area here at least until Powell speaks at the presser and what the Fed should do is slap a 50 basis point hike on the markets. But I do not believe they will. It will be a 25 basis point hike. However, if this really skyrockets up towards this area, a 50 point basis hike could be justified. So it'll be another pins and needles fed decision coming up the S&P 500 support and resistance levels big board chart shows the gray areas at the qualified and confirmed 50 percent propulsion exhaustion up daily Bollinger Band upper band daily ongoing supply line pivot point daily horizontal support from 0407 2021 and the monthly 12 simple moving average and price in the aftermarket hours for the S&P 500 on the 26th at 733 p.m. is 4049 and to the downside is the weekly ongoing supply line 4021 S1 and the weekly 65 EMA and a correction the supply line in the weekly chart is qualified but we don't pay attention to qualifying and confirming supply lines in the weekly chart just the daily chart but we do use it as support and resistance so it has this support support here at 4021.79 and to the upside is 
R1, then the daily high channel 3, which is really just a target, and the weekly diamond bottom uptrend line, and then R2, and the NDXT legging line at 6525.36 is less than a thousand points away from the NDXT up target downtrend line and the NASDAQ 100 daily AD line did make some gap between the 21 EMA signal line so it's nice to see that start moving up above that 21 EMA a lot further than it has been and the daily S&P 500 AD line is still well above its 21 EMA signal line and the New York traditional McClellan breath oscillator took a notch up from where it was yesterday so it moved up 500 points or so 400 and it would take 2,585 decliners over advancers to get back to zero there. And the PPO extreme is at 1.99% positive. So that got us above PPO level 6. And our next goal is PPO level 5 at 2.99%, so another percent and up and we'll be there. And here's the REC1, ATR2, and PPO extreme chart. And we can see the PPO extreme at 1.989, so almost 2%. And now this blue line with the arrow head here it's in blue it's hard to see but this blue line here is going to come into play now and getting above that would be a very good thing I'll zoom in and see where that's at so for the 27th that is at approximately 3.24 and then on the 30th, it's at 3.05 or so. So it's declining slightly. And this is back from the free money era around April of 2021. And you can see that the PPO extreme was declining the peaks here and price was skyrocketing so that lived in a divergence for quite a long time until it fell off the face of the earth in the beginning of 2022 so now there's a chance to get back above that line and that would be significant in my opinion and a little further down in the same chart is the S&P 500 AD line and MACD. And you can see that the AD line has hit that uptrend arrow here. And the MACD has hit its downtrend arrow here. So we are in a bearish divergence here. And... MACD would have to continue going up and if this ends up going above the green line here that arrow's trajectory will be pointed up along with this one for the AD line and that divergence will be negated but that's a lot to ask. Have a great day.